So I'm uh, Jean-Baptiste Gérard, I'm a technology manager for the HyperX uh, memory or DRAM part of things. <laughs> Okay, so I think the biggest change for DDR4 compared to DDR3 is uh, the higher speeds, right? Higher speeds bring you higher bandwidth. The, the JEDEX standard, which is kind of the baseline of the DDR4 technology, is at 2133 MHz, while uh, the DDR3 kind of finished around 2133 for the mainstream, right? We, we started at DDR3 1066, 1333 and then 1600 which was uh, kind of the the mainstream and then uh, up to we saw kits at, uh, at Kingston and HyperX we sold up to 2800 megahertz and then uh, we saw up to 3000 for DDR3 3000 megahertz in speed DDR4 we started at 2133 uh, when we released it a, a year and two months three months ago uh, our range was going from 2133 to 3000. So already at launch, we matched the speed of DDR3. And then that's only at launch. So we expect in the, in the future years for the speed to increase even more. Uh, the second change is the power consumption of the memory. So the JEDEX standard for DDR4 is 1.2 volt. Uh, for the XMP voltage, we use 1.35 volt. Uh, for DDR3, JEDEX standard was 1.5 volt and XMP uh, voltage was 1.65 volt. So there is a big decrease on that side as well. So it may not um, benefit the end user or the general consumer that much, but I think on the server side that makes made a big difference and that's why they worked on lower voltage for DDR4. For enthusiasts, yeah, you'll see a, a slight difference in power consumption, but it's not like it's going to change your, your whole electricity bill or anything like that. I think the, the overclocking is similar when, well, if, you, if you know how to overclock in general and then overclock memory on a, on a DDR3 platform, it's not going to change much, right? It's, uh, I think the, the biggest difference we, we saw uh, with Skylake actually, so um, Haswell EX99 motherboards, nothing really changed. Uh, on Skylake, the second and third timing are locked together. So, so you cannot have DDR, at the beginning of DDR4, we could have, a, let's say, 3000 cast latency 15, and then the second and third could be 16, 17. But for Skylake, these two timings needs to be the same because in the BIOS, it's linked. To, so I would say that's a big difference. And that's why you're not going to see like DDR3, um, our DDR3 2400, I think the timings are 11, 14, 13. We, we cannot do that anymore with DDR4 and Skylake. So. Uh, our DDR4 3000 is 15, 16, 16 to kind of match that. So uh, the first platform uh, a year and so ago was the high-end desktop platform by Intel. So X99 plus Haswell E processor, first platform ever to bring the DDR4 to the mainstream. Then uh, back in beginning of August this year, they released the Skylake, which support both DDR3 L and DDR4. And that's the mid-range to low-end platform if you, if you take a Pentium CPU or Core i3. So that's, um, that's where it's supposed to bring the DDR4 to the mainstream. On the AMD side, they're still at DDR3. Uh, I think we all saw rumors about the Zen architecture, uh, AMD Zen architecture, bringing DDR4 to AMD. So I think we, we're going to have to wait and see about that. In the recent years, we, we had a transition from DDR2 to DDR3, so we kind of know how it works. It's very difficult to say to the whole market, oh, by the way, next year you're all using DDR4. Uh, I mean, just consumer PCs, laptops, it's a big chunk of this market, but the huge chunk is all the servers, data centers, and, and all these guys that are using DDR3 and slide slowly switching to DDR4 with a new server. So on the consumer side, I think the first high-end desktop platform, Intel made the choice not to support DDR3 at all because they, uh, it's their most expensive platform. So they thought people could, you know, when you can afford a $500, $700, $1,000 CPU, then you can afford the memory that comes with it. So they didn't make the, the DDR3 compatibility uh, on Skylake though they've decided to support both DDR3L and DDR4. Uh, and I think that's 
that's fair. You can't expect everyone to uh, to transition. The the problem is officially Intel only supports DDR3L, so DDR3 with a 1.35 volt voltage, and uh, that's something you know. If you come from a Z97 platform with XMP memory at 1.65 volt, you will not probably not be able to use your same DDR3 on the Skylake platform. Uh, I know a lot of motherboard manufacturers have been trying to support 1.5 volt, 1.65 volt. Uh, we follow what Intel says, and Intel say only DDR3L for Skylake, so that's not something we can recommend, uh, really. You, you'll see a lot of motherboard, though, from Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, supporting uh, 1.65 volt DDR3. Uh, but if you look at the, the offering of all these vendors, the vast majority of the motherboard is DDR4. I think we've seen the, the price of DDR4 really falling and being almost on par with DDR3 now. So it should help people to move to DDR4. So that's a problem. A DDR3L will always work on a DDR3 motherboard because usually, at least for us, our DDR3 is able to run at higher voltage. The, the problem is Intel says the, the memory controller is in the CPU now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Intel says you put your, your system at risk, your processor at risk, if you use higher voltage than what's basically their support. Intel says our Skylake supports DDR3L, if, so 1.35 volt. If you, if you put 1.65 volt memory or 1.5 volt DDR3 or DDR3 XMP uh, memory, then it's kind of at your own risk. You may never see any problem or you may see problem with your CPU. So we, we have to follow at Kingston the, the official Intel uh, specification, so we, we don't advise people to use DDR3 uh, on Skylake platforms. That's why we kind of released as well more DDR3L when Skylake came out. It's definitely an improvement uh, bandwidth-wise, right? You, 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 if you buy the, the lower spec uh, DDR4, you're already at 2133 megahertz, so your bandwidth is improved. Power consumption as well. Uh, you go from 1.5 volt to 1.2 volts. So it's, it's a pretty, you have pretty big increase in gain, right? I, in bandwidth and power consumption. Um, it didn't revolutionize memory, it's, it's just a different technology, an evolution. It's kind of comparing DDR2 and DDR3, you, you only see speeds changing, voltage, timings changing, but at the end of the day, it's still the, the DDR technology. So uh, it's, it's a big change. I think um, all these new platforms, they, they are hungry for more bandwidth. So uh, I think DDR4 brings up. And also, uh, something I forgot to, to touch on is the capacity of each chip. Right? So with DDR3, we, the biggest chip produced, at least mainstream, are 4 gigabit chips. It means if you use eight of these, so a single-sided module, you have a 4 gig module, you use 16 chip on one module, you have an 8 gig module. With DDR4, we introduce, they are introducing 8 gigabit chips. So it means you can have 4, 8 or 16 gigabyte modules. And that's also something uh, we, that's a big change, I think. Uh, just today we released our 16 gigabyte modules. That's the one in this computer. So on the Z170 platform now, you can have 64 gigabyte of memory. Whereas before you had to buy the X79 or X99 platform, the high-end desktop Intel with eight slot to reach 64. And now on X99, you can reach 120 gigabyte. In general, the, the memory for, for HyperX, we try to, to split it in three categories, kind of the good, better, best. So the good for us is the Fury range. So uh, the Fury range has automatic overclocking. So I, I maybe just for your viewers, uh, you have two ways to use memory, uh, overclock memory. When I say overclock memory, it's when it passed jet extended. So let's say, uh, DDR3 1866 or 2133, that's overclocked memory. Or DDR4 2400, 2666, that's overclocked memory. So we have two ways. We have the plug and play technology that we call. So it's basically the, your, the users, and that's only Fury with plug and play. Uh, the user plugs in his module, the motherboard detects the right speed uh, at boot and applies the speed. So uh, for DDR3, we have 1333, 1600, and 1866. 
and then for DDR4, 2133, 2400, 2666. So that's, that's uh, supposed to be the cheapest range of uh, HyperX memory, and that's also for the beginner users. People that want high speed memory, but don't want to go in the BIOS and change the speed or load the XMP profile. So that's, uh, that's the one. And then um, in the best, uh, better, sorry, category, kind of our, our, our middle category, mid range, uh, we have the Savage. So it's our heat spreader, Savage heat spreader, and that's only with XMP. And that brings you a bigger range of frequencies. So Savage starts at 1600 for DDR3 up to 2400 for DDR3. And on the DDR4 side, it starts at 2133 to 3000. So that's our mid range. And then with slightly better timings than the Fury for at the same speed, so better performance. And for these, you need the XMP. So you need to go in your Intel motherboard BIOS and load the XMP so the motherboard applies all the right frequency, timings, voltage. And then we have the Predator, which is top of the range for us. Uh, that's the one in this uh, machine. And that's also from 2133 to 3000. Uh, same timings as Savage. So Savage is a low profile heat spreader while uh, Predator is a high profile heat spreader. Com cada vez mais jogos pedindo 6 ou 8 GB de memória RAM, muitos gamers estão precisando comprar novos módulos para seus computadores. Nesse vídeo, vamos mostrar como instalar mais memória RAM em seu PC, assim como dar algumas dicas do que fazer nessa situação.